Welcome to this week's uh, edition of Encompass Live. I'm Christopher Berninger, your host. Um, Encompass Live is the Breath of the Library Commission's um, weekly online event that we can do uh, every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. And it's just a collection of different activities and topics, anything we can think of that might be of huge interest to uh, the Breath of the Library community. Um, they're free, um, as I said, every week, every Wednesday morning, um, and they are recorded, so if you do not have to attend our attend at our um, live session, you can always watch a recording of anything that we're doing. Um, and then a mixture of different kinds of presentations, Q&A sessions, um, book reviews, web tours, little mini training sessions, anything you can think of that might be of interest to you. Um, today, what we are doing is a session on the uh, One Book, One Draft for 2009, uh, a lantern in, um, in your hand. So um, I'll just actually turn it over to you guys and um, you can introduce yourself and go right ahead. Thank you very much, Krista. We'll just go around and introduce ourselves and then we'll um, start talking a little bit about a lantern in your hand. We hope this will be a dialogue, so if any of you have any ideas, thoughts, suggestions, questions, please text chat them in, type them in the text box, or use your microphones to just pipe right in. We're open to whatever thoughts or ideas you may have or questions. I'm Mary Jo Ryan. I'm with the Nebraska Library Commission, and I'm the communications coordinator, and I've had the privilege of working with the lantern in her hand and the, the folks from the Best Breeder Aldrich Foundation um, to get this uh, One Book One Nebraska selection up and running. So, um, Teresa? I'm Teresa Lawrence, and I am the executive director of the Best Breeder Aldrich Foundation and um, glad to be here today and we're very excited to have been chosen for the uh, 2009 book selection. I'm Rod Wagner with the Library Commission and also the Nebraska Center for the Book, uh, one of the other key organizations involved in the uh, program. And maybe what we'll do to begin with is talk a little bit about how the One Book, One Nebraska phenomena it developed and um, a little bit about how this book was chosen. So, Roy, you've been involved with it from the very beginning, haven't you? And you have, too. I think yeah. I have, too, yes. <laughs> well, help me remember, but uh, back uh, in 2005, or maybe even a little bit before, I'm not sure, uh, it was the uh, uh, Cather Foundation uh, that uh, chose to have a statewide book discussion as part of their 50-year anniversary of the foundation. Yeah. A great idea. And they selected uh, Willa Kapther's uh, book, My Antonia. They also sought out a number of state organizations to help promote, uh, help uh, participate in the One Book uh, program. And I think there was such great interest and success that people started asking, well, that was fun. What, 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 what we do we next? Do next? <laughs> and uh, and uh, we have had uh, an annual uh, statewide book discussion each year uh, since then. Uh, the following year, the uh, Southeast Library System stepped up and contributed, and they uh, uh, did some very fine work coordinating the book discussion program that year. That was uh, uh, One False Move. One False Move, Alex Cava's book. And then the uh, uh, Mari Sandoz Heritage Society uh, offered to sponsor the uh, discussion program the following year, and they chose uh, Mari Sandoz, Sandoz's book, Crazy Horse, uh, for that uh, uh, year. And uh, just recently, this past year, Bill Clefcorn's book, Restoring the Bird Child, was the uh, book uh, for statewide discussion. 
Um, we've handled the uh, arrangements and program a bit differently each year. The program has evolved nicely. We've continued to have uh, great interest in, in uh, the One Book program. And we were delighted uh, that the process this past year resulted in selecting uh, a lantern in her hand uh, for this year. And we've been very uh, pleased with the uh, enthusiasm and help and support of the uh, Aldridge Foundation. Yeah, and if, if you're interested in a little more information about how all of this came about, how the One Book, One Nebraska um, activities evolved, this with the Nebraska Center for the Book, it's called the Nebraska Center for the Book News. I think I've got a link to that right there. And uh, that link goes straight to the article written by our colleague, Lisa Kelly, who did a little research into how these uh, One Book phenomena is. It's, it's really been a wonderful reading promotion, don't you think, Rod? I mean, libraries have really stepped up and enjoyed doing this from everything I've heard and from the evaluation. Yes, I mean, we've, had, we've had great response uh, uh, from Nebraska Library from book groups, from uh, really bookstores. Book stores. Yeah. Yes, yes. Any uh, organization that has a connection with a book discussion activity has been, it's been great. So maybe uh, we could talk a little bit about this particular book. And um, it has great appeal. Um, many people have told me that they read it when they were youngsters in middle school, in high school, and that the book had a tremendous impact on them. Even some people have talked about having the book read to them by a family member or a teacher um, who has such a, a great appeal to Nebraskans for a book discussion. Yeah, it's definitely the book that when people think about Aldrich, it's the first book that they think of. It's traditionally, if anybody's read one book, it's this one. And it's a good place to start, and we hope, of course, people will continue to read the others. But um, I don't know, I think a lot of the reason that it's so popular can be Lantern in Her Hand, and that is listed in the front of the novel, if any of you have that. At least the more modern versions, um, I'm not sure if it's in the older versions or not, but it was written by Aldrich, and she explains in the introduction why she wrote the book and the reasoning, and uh, it was really a personal thing for her, and it really shows as you read the story. Um, it's based a lot on her mother's experiences as Nebraska as a youngster, but her mother did come to Black Hawk County in, uh, in um, Iowa. And one of the things that she talks about, and I'll just read a little section, um, Bess was just very fond of her mother, and she wrote, when she was in her 80s, she once related some pioneer experiences about the snow sifting through the chinks of the cabin and making grotesque figures on the bed quilt. And Bess says, in a moment of sympathy, she remarked that we daughters were sorry that her life had been hard. And her mother looks at her with this odd little look and says, oh, story, that, um, you know, yes, there were hardships, of course there were, but it was really an adventure, and it was, not everybody was all doom and gloom about all the hardships. They, you know, withstood them, and they triumphed over them, and you get a lot of that in the story, and I think it's even now today that we can get a lot from, from that, that, you know, things are tough, but you get past them, and, and it's, you're better for it. Yeah, I think that's a, a very universal theme, and it's something that even young people can kind of relate to, um, even though they may not have the hardships and the problems that, that are described in the book, they've got their own problems, mm -hmm. and, and they can see that if somebody can overcome this, then they can overcome theirs. Right. I, I think it's a great book for, for discussion groups. I think that, that libraries are going to find it to be really mm -hmm. useful. There's also a ton of history. Aldrich was very diligent about making sure her historical facts were correct. And so all the things that happened, you know, two people in Nebraska in those days are chronicled in this book. There's the grasshopper plagues, there's drought, there's dust storms, there's blizzards. So you get a lot of the history and a lot of um, the real life Nebraska events along with it, even though it's a fictional story. So things we've heard about in myth, the mm -hmm. myth of our mm -hmm. pioneer history, they're actually the, the true events are listed at, as they happened right, in right. this book. So When she got ready to write the story, she was on a radio program, and she asked people, if you've got news clippings, diaries, stories, just any memories of your families from these days of the pioneers, would you please, she asked if they would send them to her. And she got just tons and tons of books, or tons and tons of boxes of stuff, and she spent about 14 months organizing all of that. So it's bits and pieces of real people's stories that she accumulated into this fictional story. So it's that's kind of a twist on, on things too, that it's real people's stories, just it all happens to one person in the book. Oh, that is just so cool. That is really neat that she did that. Mm -hmm. What would be the equivalent of that today? I suppose it would be like putting out on your Facebook account <laughs> that you're, what you're looking for, people's stories. People are so willing to tell mm -hmm. their stories. I mean, you can see that in today's world, you can see that on Facebook. I mean, people just tell the most personal kinds of things about yeah. their lives and their stories. And here, the, in, a, in a case like Best Street or Aldrich's research, sharing these very personal mm -hmm. experiences for her book. Right. Pretty cool. And sharing the history of, I think by the time she was writing this, this would have been like the people's grandparents or parents that had experienced this. So people wanted their family's history to be told, and they shared that with her. Yeah, that's another thing we don't know, often think about. I mean, we think about this as happening, obviously, in the past. This story happened in the past, but it was the past to her, too. Mm -hmm. It wasn't her history. It was for more the era of her grandparents right. and her mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
So that's another thing I think it's kind of important to remember here. I'm holding this up, but uh, I don't think anybody can see it. You can see the book cover. Um, the book cover uh, shows that it is the one book, one Nebraska selection. So we're pretty thrilled with that, that that new printing came out just in time for people to get the one book, one Nebraska selection seal on it. You can also see on the slide that we have at the Best Streeter Aldrich um, Foundation website, beststreeteraldrich.org slash one underscore book dot html that's the the website for that the one book one nebraska for this year so if you want to you can go to that and you can find all kinds of resources i guess that that'd be great yeah, go, sure. just go to best street or aldrich dot org and at first and then mm -hmm. people can see what it looks like <laughs> Woo! we're running all kinds of places yeah. here i don't know if you can all see this but we're we're traveling yeah, if you want, you can. Oh, yeah, there it is. So if you if you click on the home page, or yeah, that's what you'll get on your home on the home page. And so if you don't put the slashes and stuff in there, like I never do when I'm looking for something, I, on the home page you can just click on that green box, and that will get you right to the page with all the information. Perfect. And all the links are there on the bottom. Well, let's talk a little bit about what the resources are here on this web page for libraries or others that are trying to do schools, book discussions. Um, it could be uh, Boy Scout troop book discussions. I mean, I don't know exactly where the discussions happen. A lot of times they happen in the, in the libraries, the public libraries. But, you know, I think they're happening all over the state. Book clubs, whatever. Um, we have a press kit. So let's go there, huh? And also, if you have any questions or suggestions as we're talking, please just pipe up. The press kit was produced by the uh, one of our partners, which is the University of Nebraska Press. And I guess I should uh, not be remiss in mentioning our partners. Um, this, is, of course, is sponsored through the Nebraska Center for the Book. But we also have support and sponsorship from the, ne the Nebraska Humanities Council, um, the Nebraska Library Association, of course, the Nebraska Library Commission, and the University of Nebraska Press, but especially, of course, the Best Reader Aldrich Foundation. They are the sponsors. They are the ones that are, are organizing so many wonderful activities that we'll talk about in a while, and they have been really helpful in developing this. Um, again, this was the press kit was developed by the press, the University of Nebraska Press, and we have in the press kit a book description, a bio of the author, some reviews, discussion questions, and other information. Now, the discussion questions, if we kind of zip down to those, I think those are really useful for book discussion groups. And I always encourage people when I hear about they're going to do a book discussion, be sure and take a look at these discussion questions because I think they can be most helpful. And then if we go back to the page. Thank you. There's also a place here for libraries to, when you're going to order to get a, a discount from the press. This takes you straight to the press, and it tells you you can get 25% off when you order three or more copies of the lantern in your hand. And you have to do it through this page because you have to use that discount code. So um, that's a good, uh, another good support that the press is giving us. And we're going to put up the proclamation very soon. We had a wonderful time at the proclamation ceremony in Elmwood. The, the lieutenant governor came and presented the proclamation. We had a representative from the legislature, Senator Dave Pankinen. We had fabulous representation from the Center for the Book Board and the, and the, the Aldrich Foundation, the Library Foundation in Elmwood and the Elmwood Public Library staff, but we also had people from the public who just love this book and love Best Reader Aldridge and showed up, the place was packed. It was very fun, great cookies too. <laughs> and we, uh, I guess I should also mention that people were there from the Nebraska Library Association as well. Um, and these are links to um, the association, the ma the main website, but then if you go up to the top, it says book club kit. And in the book club kit, um, there's just a little information about how to set up local activities. Um, obviously, you can just have a book discussion and it doesn't take any organization except getting people together and making sure they have the book ahead of time so they can read it. Um, but there's also other things we can do. 
Um, we have an opportunity to have uh, Carol Miles Peterson, who is Beth Strader Aldrich's biographer, give a program in your community. And if you go to this link here that's on this page, it'll take you to the Humanities Council where they describe what her program is and also, see there it is right there, Best Reader Aldrich Biography by Carol Miles Peterson. If you if you um, submit a form to the Humanities Council, you can request funding for this so that you can pay for Carol Miles Peterson's expenses. And if you go back to the previous page, I think it should have a link to where you go to, yeah, apply for a grant from the Nebraska Humanities Council to finance your event. And that's right there. If you click on that link, you can see you'll go straight to the place where you fill out a form, very simple form, requ requesting funding to have Carol Miles Peterson come and do a program for you. Exactly, yes. You've got to be in elementary, middle, or high school, college or university, youth organization, but also public libraries. So if you go through, this is a good way to get the funding to have that kind of a program as well as a book discussion. So you can build a whole series of activities. You can have the book discussion. You can have the program. You can have an art contest by the kids in the school of what, what the prairie might have looked like that she lived on, whatever. Um, also, we'd like to mention again that we would like to encourage people to borrow our book club kit. We actually ran out of books. We didn't have enough books in our kits because they were going so fast. And so we worked with the press to get more books. So we now have more books. So if you were unable to get the kit for when you needed it, or if you were unable to get as many books in the kit as you wanted, contact us again. This is our um, the Library Commission uh, contact page for getting the book club kits from us. We have more books now. And so do the systems. The regional library systems also have some kits and we've uh, sent them more books. So actually this is, a, we have a lot of kits, not just a lantern in her hand as Chris is showing you here. Um, so you can, you can keep your book club going. There it is right there. there it is. So do, indeed, we do encourage you to call again, especially if you were unable to schedule it for when you wanted, because we do have more books, both at the Library Commission and at the system offices. And I think that's Let's see if there's anything we haven't talked about. Did here. you want to mention the video at this point? Oh, thank you, Teresa. Yes, there's a wonderful video of, of um, Carol Miles Peterson. Correct. And she she opens it and she closes she it and then it, it closes. It's it. narrated by um, Laura Black that does a lot for the Na public Nebraska television. Public Radio. Yes, so and public television. Yeah, so she does a great job. And there's a tw like about a 20 minute version that's a biography, and then there's a longer 40 minute version also on the same tape that's got a little more of the Elmwood history and a little more of the time period that uh, Aldrich was in Elmwood. So depending on what your interests are, you can use either or both of those. And you have permission to show this in the library. So here's the cool thing. Now you're up to four programs. You've got a whole series of programs. <laughs> and that video history, we've got several copies of that here at the Library Commission that you can check out or reserve if you'd like to reserve it for a future event. And there it is. Did you hear Krista say that? She said, here it is right here, the contact information. Our 800 number, if you're in Lincoln, our 471 number. And if you want to email, ready at nlc.state.ne.us. So that's a, that's a good way to do it. Um, another thing we wanted to mention is that we do have digital resources now on Nebraska Memories from the collection at, at the Best Reader Aldrich Foundation house. And what kind of things are, are up there? I know there's some pages from her original manuscript. That's right. very cool. To get started, we just put things that were related to a lantern in her hand specifically or to Aldrich's history that kind of led her to write the lantern in her hand. There are, there should be a picture of 
the lantern itself on there. They've got that up Oh, yet. and the quill. A lot of people are interested in quill. Yeah, they. You could almost do with these pictures. Can, can people who use these pictures, you could almost do a portfolio like a little um, display. Mm -hmm. you? And that third item there is the original manuscript of the lantern in her hand that we have at the Aldrich Museum. And she even scans a couple of the pages in there so you can see uh, the little corrections that she made as she was going along or maybe she liked a different word or she rephrased something, which is really cool. Oh man, you just don't get to see this kind of original author work up close and personal, mm -hmm. do you? So the first few pages of the book are in there. That's very cool. And you can see how in a school, these kinds of resources might be useful to kids. You know, maybe they, maybe they want to do a PowerPoint about a lantern in their hand, and they could use some of these images to create a, a student PowerPoint. Yeah, that's Ooh. the lantern that inspired it all. It's actually a, a mutton towel lantern, which is a little different than the lanterns that we think of. But mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Aldrich's mother carried that from her native home in Scotland, and it came to the States with them and then across the Midwest to Iowa. See, this is so great because if kids are reading this book, for example, they are going to have in their minds an entirely different picture mm -hmm. of what this is about. And then they see this and it changes everything. Mm -hmm. it, it helps them to kind of just kind of switch their thinking into an older time, a different yeah. time. And all of these items that are on here are on display at the either the Best Street or Aldrich House or the Aldrich Museum. So one other thing you could add to your you know, plans for the year is a tour. We do do group tours. And we, you know, welcome school groups, adult groups, and everything in between. Yes. In fact, people may not know this, but Elmwood has really two sites. They have the house that the family lived in. They also have, at the library, a museum. Mm -hmm. And the museum's where we keep the smaller things that are, that need to be in glass cases, like mm -hmm. the manuscript and the smaller, you know, just lots of correspondence and letters. And that's her writing desk that's up on the screen now. And it's at the Aldrich House, the actual desk that she used. Wow. And we'll even and let you sit open, the, if you open yeah, it. We'll even let you sit in the chair and sit behind the desk and take a picture. We're <laughs> kind of a hands-on sort of museum. That's her real typewriter. It's uh, not actually. Not. It's, it's, no. But it's like oh, she would have used. But it's yeah. just like the one she would have yes, used. Yes, you can imagine <laughs> what it was. So you could sit there and pretend mm -hmm. that you're actually going to type a novel just uh, as good as hers. The museum hours would be the same as the library hours, I assume. Well, actually, um, it's... The museum at the library is you only used when we um, take a tour down there. So, so it's not, open by appointment. Yeah, you don't just so go to the library okay, and yeah, go okay, to the museum. Yeah, um, to, uh, we, yeah. make arrangements. So it's typically it's best to come to the house during our regular hours, which are on our website at 2 oh. to 5 on the weekends this time of year. And then we can take you down to the museum. Oh. But if, say, a school group wants to come, right. you'll make a special Yeah, we will schedule group tours at any time. And typically then we will start the museum and we'll show the video, 20-minute video, to get people acquainted with her and then we'll move over to the house after that sounds great and then just to kind of go through some of the other things that are in the book club kit quickly because obviously you can go through this yourself but you can download posters and the press kit the, the posters are great because they've got a little room on them so you can put your own information about your book discussion here we go Now I've seen people just take a magic marker and put, as you come to the bottom, I think there's a little space down there, and just put the, the time and the, of the book discussion and the uh, place of the book discussion right on the side there with a magic marker. It makes it easy. It's a simple way to do it. 
Um, I think probably the rest of this is, is pretty much just links that you can explore on your own. Um, I wanted to mention a couple of things, Teresa, because you've got some activities coming up. Right. And if you want to make a field trip, these things that are coming up sound like they'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, and if you would click on the news and events, that should take you to our event page. Uh, the birthday celebration, that's finished. Um, the next thing we have coming up there is the spring banquet, and that's open to the public and and Carol Peterson, the biographer, is going to be our speaker. She's been a really good friend to our foundation and has really, just by having a biography of Aldrich out there, has really been helpful. So she's going to speak about the story behind a lantern in her hand. And we also host a short story contest every year. And the deadline was the 17th of February for this year's contest. And those winners will be honored at the banquet. Um, there is a link on our website to the short story contest rules. So that we will ho be holding another contest for this upcoming year. There's middle school, high school, and adult categories. And we encourage anybody interested to enter. And we would sure appreciate any promotion that our libraries can help us with. So we will honor those winners at the banquet also, and all the information's there, RSVPing. The summer family event, we do have a date on that now. It's going to be August 15th, and that is being organized um, mostly by our Elmwood Public Library. And right now they're looking at having a day-long celebration with um, old-fashioned games and activities, sack races, horseshoes, that kind of thing. It's not fully settled, but it's going to be the 15th of August. And then Journey into Christmas is our big event for the year, typically. And we have some great local families and groups and clubs that will come and decorate the Aldrich House. So every room has a tree. Every room is completely decorated. And we do guided tours and serve refreshments. So if you have never been, that's a good time to visit because it's just a really festive atmosphere and definitely our, our biggest event of the year. And we, Rod and I, we, we visited the house, but not during the Christmas mm -hmm. time. Wonderful. And if you've been at a different time, it's another world at Christmas time, so it's definitely worth visiting again. I bet the decorations are fabulous. Mm -hmm. The house are, is gorgeous. They're too creative, some people. <laughs> <laughs> the house has got kind of an arts and crafts style to it and fabulous windows. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you like old, older houses and you like to see what they were like, you can actually see what the old closets were like. Yeah. It's never been modernized, mm -hmm. um, so you can really see old closets mm -hmm. with windows in the closets because they didn't have lights in, yeah. in the closets. The home was built in 1922, and the Aldrich family did have it built. So it was it was their vision, their dream, and they were the first people, you know, to live in it. And it's been well cared for ever since. So it does look a lot like it did when they were there. Yeah, it has. A, the the, uh, the kitchen was modernized, it looked like, mm -hmm. in the 70s. But, man, you go upstairs and it's just like you're stepping back in mm -hmm. time. Yeah, all it's the really... old lights, all the old push-button light switches mm -hmm. and yeah. everything. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention that isn't on the events list yet, but we'll be getting that up there, um, is that we are on November 14th, 2009, we're having the Nebraska Book Festival in conjunction with the Nebraska Center for the Book Annual Meeting. And at that festival in the afternoon, we'll be having a statewide lantern in our hand discussion book session. And it'll be fun for everybody's invited. You can come and, and read the book before November 14th, and we'll all be discussing that book. And, and I think it'll be very interesting because I think it'll be mo uh, mostly adults, but young people are welcome too. It'll be interesting to see what the reaction to the book mm -hmm. is from a large sort of diverse group of people. So that's another thing that, that is not up there yet, but will be because that's just being planned. It is a book that is suitable for kids, um, you know, anybody who's you know, upper elementary at least, I think would be, you know, it'd be a fine book for them to get started on. It's not just for grown-ups. No, it's a, it, actually, it's a terrific book to read aloud. I can't tell you the number of teachers that have told me that they read it aloud to their classrooms. It was sort of like a treat. When the day's work was accomplished, mm -hmm. they would have 15, 20 minutes of reading, and they read this book to the classroom, and you could hear a pin drop because they just were absorbed in it. Does anybody have any questions about the opportunities uh, for programming around this? Go ahead and type a text. Oh, Claudette, are you having trouble hearing us? Can you turn it, oh, your speakers <laughs> up? Can you turn your speakers up? Um, sometimes on the speaker, there's a little knob. 
it gets turned down or muted. Sometimes there's a mute on the speakers. All we're waiting to see. Does anybody have any questions? Questions, comments, suggestions about what you're thinking of doing at your libraries, maybe? You can use your microphone if you have one. Hold on the control key and keep holding it while you're talking, or type. go ahead and type into the text chat. Well, this is Laura England over at Keene Memorial. Hi, Laura. I'm just, hello. <laughs> I'm just kind of thinking we might try and do the foundation banquet as a kickoff to our stuff and then do the discussion and things like that through May. That might be interesting to put together with some of our city group or city organizations to put together a bus or something. Uh, give us some notice on that so we, <laughs> we make sure we have plenty of uh, seating. We do have it at the Elmwood School so there's lots of lots of room but we might have to finagle some chairs and tables but that would be a good problem to have. We would definitely welcome you. I have to find out if they'll let me do it first but I will sure let you know. I think it'd be a great field trip and by then we'll have better weather. And we have good food. Lips to God's ears, Mary Jo. <laughs> Where is Elmwood located, Laura? Hess is asking. Can you give her directions? Where are you, Laura? Um, where are we at Stanton Public Library? Stanton, okay. Um, is that closer to Elmwood or Lincoln? Mm -hmm. My geography. Yeah, kind of well, okay. From from Lincoln, it's a very easy trip. We're just a, you just go right out on Highway 34, which is O Street. Um, from the east edge of Lincoln, it's only about 18 miles, and then you turn and go two miles north. From Omaha, you you can either come out on the interstate and exit at the Mahoney State Park exit. And then there are paved roads that will take you cross country to get to Elmwood, or you can come right out Highway 50 um, to Highway 1. So from, from Omaha, it's only about a 40 minute trip. So we're pretty close to either one of those. And yeah, there are driving directions on, on, our, uh, on our website there. Is there a map further down? Um, you go down? No, these are links to oh. directions of MapQuest. Oh, oh MapQuest, okay, sure, I get it. And you know, if, and if you would want to email me, and I'd be happy to send you specific directions too. It just takes me my brain a little while to figure it out. Yeah, oh. Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very Laura, easy. It's, it's a, very easy. It's a short drive from Lincoln. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty drive too. Yeah. So you'll enjoy it. Um, Claudette. Claudette's asking about, or she's mentioning that the local reading council may want to work with this. We think that's great. That's great that is a fabulous idea. I didn't even think about sending the information to the reading council. So we do appreciate it if you can share that information. Other one, ideas? One of, our, one of the pages that was up earlier in, uh, gave mention to the, the blog post about the program. And I noticed there was a statement there about encouraging people to use that as a vehicle to make offer comments about programming activities. Thank you, Rod. I'm so glad you thought of that. If we go to the Library Commission blog post, and I think, didn't we find it by searching? We searched best through Dr. Aldrich, or did we just, oh, right there. <laughs> Okay. That's where you're wanting people to uh, offer comments about. Yes. Yes, that just be wonderful. Because this way, we will get feedback for evaluation purposes, but also all of you that go into the blog can see what other people are doing and get uh, get their ideas. And you know, then we're not reinventing the wheel. We can use each other's ideas. So if you go down a little bit, Krista, you can see right there, anybody can post a comment with your name and your email address and just put in there what your thoughts are, what your ideas are, what your needs are, anything you need help with. And we'll keep an eye on that and it'll be a sharing vehicle. Uh, this post is originally posted, uh, put up in November. 
so um, in order to find it, you can, when you're anywhere on the blog, you can just do a search for Aldridge or Lantern. Any one of those will come up with it as a search result, and then you'll get this specific um, post. And if you go back to our front page, Krista, we can show where the, the not the main page, the front page of our our website. Oh, the oh, the permission website. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> now you can see at the bottom. If you go down to the bottom of the page, there's the blog. You click there, and up comes the search box. Search on Lantern or Best Street or Aldridge, or, and the post comes up. And also, what'll be up here in the future will be this podcast. If you talk to anybody who was unable to attend this, they can listen to it on on this podcast. Any other posts people might make about events throughout the year? I mean, yeah, they put up for reminders or announcements of new things coming up. We'll stay in touch with each other on this. Any other thoughts? I would like to mention too that if anybody would like to um, receive notifications about things that are going on with the Aldrich Foundation, uh, especially this year, but in the future, there are a couple of ways. Uh, there on the page, on the website page, there's a contact us that will email me and just let me know you'd like to be put on our email reminder list and then if there's news coming up or something that uh, i think people should be notified or reminded about i will send an email or if you'd like to join to become a member then of course we send out a couple of newsletters every year which with a lot of news and, and updates but the simplest way to do that would be just to email me under the contact page and let me know what you need and what you're thinking, and we're, we're happy to help. Great. Well, I think if, uh, if there are other questions, please, or suggestions or ideas, please just type right up. If not, I think I'd like to ask Teresa if she might be willing to read a little bit from the book or from any section? Well, just to get ready for this, I, I did look through the book and find one of my favorite passages. And I mentioned there's a lot of, re, you know, references to different natural events and different plants and everything that natural about Nebraska. But there's also, uh, she talks about some in, more intangible things, which really is what captures my imagination. Um, she, there's a lot of talk about grief and death and and um you know joy and one of the things one of my favorite passages is here it's if you've got the book it's starting with page 35 and abby is abby deal is the main character she is a a young girl at this time and they've just recently um i think they're in iowa at the time they haven't come to nebraska yet because abby has had now passed her 14th birthday on an April afternoon, with the river high and clods of snow still at the roots of trees, she went into the timber to look for anemones and Dutchman's breeches, for dogtooth violets and the first signs of mayflower buds. Coming out on her own particular grassy knoll in the clearing, she went up the hillock in one of those moments of desire to let out her feelings in song. To the squirrels, she may have seemed an ordinary girl clothed in the green-checked gingham dress with reddish brown curls twisted up into a snood, but the squirrels were not seeing correctly. For Abby knew that she had a dark velvet dress that swept around her feet, a string of pearls on her neck, and in her hand, a hat with a sweeping plume. She was holding it carefully or carelessly at her side with her long, slender fingers that tapered at the ends. At the top of the knoll, she turned. A sea of white faces looked up at her. To the casual observer, it might have seemed a mass of wild plum blossoms. Even before she sang, the audience applauded vociferously and a few people stood up. An onlooker, who was not magic-eyed, might have thought that the wind merely blew the blossoms. 
Abby bowed, smiled, and waited for her accompaniment to begin. She fingered her pearls and smiled at the girl at the reed organ. All at once, she realized that the girl at the organ was a talented orphan whom she had been befriending. It made her feel happy, lighthearted. She threw back her head and began singing. And then there's a quote from the song, The Lady of the Lee, which was, is a recurring theme in the book. And that's, if you notice on the Nebraska Memories site, there's sheet music for that. So that's my favorite. That is so great. I love it. I think that gives you a real feel. Mm -hmm. She had a lot of imagination and a lot of whimsy and a lot of wonder in her, and she brought it out in in ways like that. And it's a perfect uh, section for this time of the year Mm -hmm. where we could all go outside and see if there are any snowdrops or violets or anything peeking out. Mm -hmm. You can imagine how great it would feel to see some. The crocuses are starting to come up in my yard, I noticed. Oh, right. Are they actually blooming or are they just the green pieces? A little bit of Ah, I'm telling you. There is hope out there. It's almost here. Hopefully they'll survive today. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Today it's pretty cold in Lincoln. Well, thank you all for being with us. And please, if you have any questions, we're going to be here for a little while. So go ahead and type them in or um, speak in the microphone. And um, it's it's just been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Teresa, for joining us here today. Thank you for having us. It's been been terrific. So anybody else, um, any thoughts, any ideas? If you think of it later, put it on the blog. That'd be great. We'd love to have that kind of communication. Any other thoughts for the good of the group? Thank you. Oh, thank you, Claudette. Thanks for joining us, Claudette, and and all. Now we're getting applause. Oh, that's for Teresa's reading. That applause was for Teresa's reading. That was fun. Anything else? Anybody want to? I think we're good to go. Thank you. Contact information on the last screen. Mm -hmm. So if you need us for anything, you can get us. This is all in PowerPoint that was emailed to people and will be on our slide share account as well. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks, everyone. And um, that will wrap up today's Encompass Live then. Um, we'll be back again next week, uh, Wednesday, 10 a.m. Central Time, on uh, Gold of Nebraska and Cheers. Okay. Yes, the Cheers. Local Information Health Resources. Yes, we have somebody coming from the Medical Center, mm-hmm. and she's going to talk about all the resources they have. I think they've got displays that you can put up in the library. I know they've got a telephone hotline that your customers can use when they need health information and just a whole lot of other stuff. So she'll be. I, that'll be real interesting session. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.